Good morning and welcome to this video from Yoker Evangelical Church. Uh, today it's Thursday the 18th of June and in our Bible reading plan this morning we read Deuteronomy 23 and Psalms 112 to 113. And this morning I want to take a quick look at Deuteronomy 23 and how it encouraged me. Again and again in Deuteronomy we are seeing passages that seem at first to just be lists of rules and quite often we can wonder why is this here why how does this help me today to follow Jesus what is it about this list of rules that was written thousands of years ago that can help me to live today and I think Deuteronomy 23 captures this really well because it's a lot of rules about the assembly that are really specific to the people then it talks about being clean when they're in the camp and then there's miscellaneous rules. But actually each of these things points us uniquely to how we need Jesus. So first, I think this passage really shows us God's holiness. The passage is really clear that the people have to be pure so that they can be close to God. Just listen to what it says in verse 14 about this. For the Lord your God moves about in your camp to protect you and deliver your enemies to you. Your camp must be holy so that he will not see among you anything indecent and turn away from you. You see, because God is travelling with the people, they themselves need to be holy. There is a high standard of holiness required to be close to a holy God. And first of all, I want to give praise this morning that we have a God that is so holy, that we have a God who embodies holiness and who takes it seriously. This chapter helps us remember that God takes his own holiness seriously, and we should too, that it is not something light, but that his holiness has weight to it, and that we should respect that. But this passage is also a brutal wake-up call to just how unholy we are and how unholy we can be. As we read through the rules, no doubt, while rules about picking corn may not specifically apply, the underlying principle of not being greedy should cut us deep as we think of all the times when we have taken more than we needed, more than we deserved. The rules remind us of the high standards that God has set especially those first ones about children born from illegitimate marriages. Just listen to verse 2. No one born of a forbidden marriage, nor any of their descendants, may enter the assembly of the Lord, not even the tenth generation. So that means if your great-great-great-great-great-grandparents weren't married, you couldn't enter the assembly. You would be cut off from the people and cut off from the presence of God. And so this is really serious. And it should hit us when we think, I don't know that my family way back when was all married. But in every likelihood, all of us would have some relation which would exclude us. These high standards would actually exclude all of us. And even if we could prove that our family trees contain none of that, we still all are guilty of the other things this passage talks about, of being jealous, of being greedy, of telling lies. But the hope of this passage is found by looking to Jesus, because it's his righteousness that we depend on, not our own. It is not the hope that we have obeyed all of these laws that gives us hope, but that Jesus perfectly obeyed all of this. And then gave up his life on our behalf so that we could have his holiness. I rejoice this morning reading this, knowing that disobedience did not exclude me from the assembly. Why? Because Jesus bought that right for me with his blood. And I can celebrate being free from rule keeping towards my own salvation. Because my salvation was secured by Christ. I read these rules and rejoice that Jesus has done it all, and he has bought us for himself. 
I am reminded reading this chapter that church is full of imperfect people. People who would not meet the standards of Deuteronomy 23. And yet this chapter reminds me of the grace of God in sending Jesus to buy his church so that these imperfect people might come together, worship Christ, all to the glory of God. I hope you have a good day and God bless.